Okay guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us. We wanted to do uh, uh, an interesting video today. Mm. Um, hot topic, uh, every single season. Um, every single week. Every single week, <laughs> every forum, every YouTube channel debates the value of the shaft. Yep. We've debated the value of the shaft and mm -hmm. we've tested it in the past and it's been, it's been a while since we've, yes. we've sort of done it. We've not done it with you, Correct. We have done it with uh, with with Sean when when we first started the channel about a year ago and absolutely yeah. more than a year ago. It was like a week or one, one or two. I think it, really it was. was. That video. It was early on in yeah. the in the YouTube uh, sort of our, our life or here on, on YouTube. So um, we're going to do the the new Diamana range. We're going to do the RF, which is the Red Force, and the DF. So that's this one here. Yes. So basically, whiteboard and redboard. Whiteboard, redboard. That's yeah. exactly what it is. As, as people know them. Uh, these are the latest version um, of of those two sort of it's good looking stuff. Um, yeah, they're it? classic bend so nice. profiles. So they, they the, do a good job with it. <laughs> so nice, it yeah. looks so nice. So the purpose of it is um, designed to be a high launch shaft. Yes. RF designed to be a low launch shaft. Definitely. Uh, what did you just call this? DF. DF sorry. Yeah. So. They're designed for that. That's what goes on, you know, with the product badging. That's what's on the website. Correct. That's why people will buy them. Yeah. The question is always, does it actually do that? Mm -hmm. And if it does, how? Why does it do that? Correct. And and the big the big problem I think a lot of people have in in this space is the marketing that goes along mm. with the shafts. Agreed. Here is a high launch shaft. Here is yeah. a low launch shaft. Does it do that? Well, mm. you know, we've seen in the past it can and it often does and it often doesn't. Correct. You know, so yeah. it, it really depends who we give it to. So mm -hmm. we've never done this test uh, with, with you and mm -hmm. we've, we've kind of decided to revisit an old friend Absolutely. in the, uh, the F9 as well. So Haven't seen that thought, one in a while. No, no, it's, it's uh, a good time to revisit it. You're hitting the driver lovely tonight. So in, in times when Matt's hitting the driver so well as he is tonight, um, we like to do these tests that require a lot of precision um, Best to be consistent at that time. 100%. Sure. Yeah. You know, we, we really knew, in order to limit the variables and mm. understand what's going on, where we can really isolate as much as humanly possible, right. we can I isolate the, the deflection uh, from each shaft. Um, you know, this will be interesting to see. The two things I'm looking for, what happens to strike point? Mm -hmm. uh, what happens to dynamic loft? Okay. What happens to uh, attack angle? Does attack angle move uh, upward with the softer shaft? Do we get more deflection? All those sorts of things. Right. Those are the quantifiable variables that actually can change the ball flight. Definitely. Because people definitely. are focusing on whatever. Yeah. The, the, the design of it, the mm -hmm. sticker on it, the kick point of it. Those are the things that physically change yeah. launch and spin. Obviously yeah. not. Yeah. So as you say, it'll be good to see exactly mm -hmm. what are those things that yeah. are the reason it may or may not yeah. launch higher or lower. And in and, and truth, you know, a lot of a lot of what we're saying there is, you know, we're kind of joking a little bit. But in, in truth, what we're really trying to do here is is show you guys that, that when you change shaft, you can change some of the characteristics you might be struggling with. Mm. Whether that be plagued with a specific strike point, whether that being plagued with a, you know, a, a specific sort of load characteristic of a shaft. Right. You know, you can, you can influence how that, that club works dynamically. Absolutely. So um, let's, let's you know, get a little baseline testing. So what have you got in there right now? This R is the, the RF first, is that okay? okay? We'll let's start go with Red that. Force first. Okay. I like it. So everything's set up neutral on the, the driver settings. This yep. is an X-Flex, so they're both X-Flex shafts. Correct. Are they the same weight? They're the exact same weight. They're both 70 gram right. TX, um, the stiffest that they offer. Not really any other variables other than the bend profile. That's correct, okay. yep. Made by the same company, made in the same factory, exactly. all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna do something for the very first time uh, with this one, aren't we? We're gonna, we're gonna actually sh overlay and show the, you know, the guys how the EI curves, um, yeah. sort of how they, how they compare to one another. And probably make a bit of sense of what an EI curve actually, because it, it's, it makes sense to engineers, it makes yep. sense to people like you, because you, you're familiar with what it means. Exactly. But it's on, it's on the marketing materials on a website, isn't it? So yep. it'll be good for people to understand what it actually is 100%. showing. 100%. Okay. Okay, Martin, nice, nice flight. Swing. A 
a lot of hang time in, in this uh, this Cobra, isn't it? It's really got the high launch, low spin characteristics for you. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, that launches up quite a bit from yeah. hitting the ping earlier. That was a good swing. That was a quite a good swing. Good two. Oh. I thought about it. Also, you felt like a good swing. Mm hmm. Just hanging the fung face a little bit on it. <coughs> Now, Matty, what do you feel like has caused you to... Because this is an interesting thing where kind of the opposite can happen yeah. um, on, in terms of the deflection and, and how the club is not really catching up. And No, you're right. But it's not like I'm picking this up and going, oh, this feels ridiculous. But I'm really having trouble... Having a hard time now. Catching the middle. And people, I think a lot of people are sort of still under the impression that soft shafts hook and, and yeah. stiff shafts block. Could, but don't, don't right in, now. In this sense, it's, it's not. You're, you're actually having a hard time matching up the deflection of the softer shaft. True. And we'll know that that's the case once we go into DF, yeah. if that is it. So give me three more sure. really nice ones. Okay. Uh, let's, let's see what comes out of it. That's a better swing. Tony Fino uh, jumped into this shaft uh, recently. Oh, you're kidding. Wow. What do you think about that for him? No, well, I mean, I, yeah, I'm going to say not great, but he, he did hit all 14 He did, fairways he did in, drive in the it third really third round nicely. of the Masters. Yeah. That was a really nice, uh, that was a really nice flight now, and your ball speed was up much higher there. Yeah. That was a bit more like what I'm used to. I mean, a 10 degree launch and 2000 spin is probably not what you'd expect from that, is no. it? No. So it's a very similar swing, but that's caught low on the face. It's okay, yep. And this is a decent driver low in the face. It's quite quick. Are you finding that in your yeah, fittings too? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I definitely am. Uh, well, there you go. So a little low in the head, 174 yeah, ball speed, still quite efficient. Tilts the launch down, but it really kind of manages the spin. True. Uh, very comfortable with low strikes with this driver. Hmm. I think I maybe may have said that in, in some other videos, yeah. uh, how much I, I like it on, on lower strikes. Some shafts, uh, some heads just have that, th those characteristics, you yeah. know, like kind of like jailbreak as well. We've said that in For the past. For sure, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that's the pattern that most golfers will see, you'd say, is low heel kind of thing. That's so, where you want yeah, to get I mean, the most out of it. Yeah, it, it varies, Matt. You know, we, we definitely see it varies all the time. You know, I think we're able to sort of help people because of the technology with Quad. We're able to help people with... Uh, their patterns of strike location. Mm. So throughout the fitting, we're, we're kind of educating them on why they hit it in certain places and how to adjust if they do. It's true. That feedback probably gives them the ability to change it where they haven't been able to oh, before. It, it really does. It, it changes uh, so many things in the fit. Mm. Okay, give me one more, one more goodie with this one and then we'll okay. throw in the DF. <laughs> Love that flight. Struck higher on the face for sure. Yeah, just has that lovely little soft draw. Yeah, yeah, a good, a good swing put on. Different strike, but a good swing. Well, a little mixture of strikes going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, by no means uh, is, is it creating sort of, you know, high launch conditions. <clears throat> no. What we're probably just seeing is, is just uh, a slightly more slightly more of a challenge for you to time, to time. Uh, time the way the shaft bends. Well, the funny thing is that probably the very best swing and best strike I made launched just under 10 degrees yep. and spun just under two, which after hitting a million drivers earlier, that's about as low launch and low spin of, as I got on a good mm -hmm. swing. So that would not be what I would have expected. You'd think that would kick up, you know, 12, 13 on a, on a really good swing. Yeah, not, not typical at all. So this yeah. is where this is going to be really fascinating for us to... <clears throat> to throw uh, the DF in mm. and see what we get. I think what this, and this is what we're seeing, this is, this is what we use uh, shafts for. Yep. It's, it's to create um, 
create timing and present the club face in, in the yep. right in the right fashion. Whether that's using the bend profile, the CG location on the shaft, the, you know the balance point, right. we're using the weight of the overall shaft, all all those sorts of things we're using as tools in order to make the best delivery we can. Do you think one of the errors people are making with shaft choices is they're um, they're <clears throat> pigeonholing what it does? They're not Definitely. actually using it as just a tool Definitely. of many. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's that's a, it's always been a a big problem. Um, you know when when Manufacturers in the past have called shaft. This is a high launch, low spin shaft. How? Exactly. Yeah. How is that? How you is know, it possible, right? Exactly. So how can you identify that this product is going to produce high launch and low spin? Mm -hmm. You know, we need a bunch of different things to happen. For sure. we, we need a specific strike point. We need a specific spin loft. Yep. Uh, you know, all those things need to, to come together to create high launch, low spin. There isn't a shaft out there that can produce high launch, low spin. On its own. On its own, yeah. correct. That's, if you that's give me 11 and a half degrees right now, there's yeah. no high launch, low, there's no low spin happening. It doesn't period. matter what you do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, that's important for, for, I think, for people to know that we, we, that's how we see it. Agreed. That's exactly yep. how we see it. Agree. Curious about this. Uh, first couple of swings in, give me, a, give me an idea how you're feeling sure. the shaft load and Kay. what's going on. That was really good. That's a nice one there, Matty. Nice opener. Yeah. Love that flight. Pretty flat. Was quite flat, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. A little flat bullet. Everything felt very in sync with that. Okay. That's, Timing that's felt a, good. That's a, you know, a definite, you know, I mean, it's, easy, it's obviously easy to say, like, I hit a good shot. Oh, everything was sure. in sync. But, it, yeah. but in all seriousness, coming through impact, it just felt like the, uh, the club kind of came along for the ride a little better. Okay. Matched up a little bit more for you? I think so, yeah. It's pretty good. It's long. It's got the long ball appearance. Definitely. Move the strike up on that. Mm hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Uh... Loved that one. That was good, yeah. Oh, sounded hammered. Yeah, that was a good one too. Turned a shade. Turned a shade. Just to be honest, it was just a lack of spin. Yeah, uh, just, it just caught. It just it caused it to kind of just make a little sharp turn to the right at the top of its apex. Gotcha. That was really good. Yeah. <clears throat> Coming back, lovely. I would say the start line was me just aiming a little bit too far left, but that swing was one of the mm -hmm. better ones. Good. I think that was, yeah, I think that was pretty good. You give me two more. Okay. That's nice. Yeah, that was a good one. Really nice. Hit it well. We hit it really well. Tonked. Okay, Matty, interesting stuff. Um, probably never played out exactly as we thought it would, or, or you know, certainly not how people expected it. For would. sure. Enough fits for you, obviously, thousands and thousands where you've worked with products like yeah. this, you've given them mm -hmm. to different types of golfers, fast, slow, steep, you know, hitting up on all different kinds of players, and yep. you've seen all the results. So I know this isn't a surprise for you, but I think it will be a big surprise for most people watching. Press pause on that and, and kind of talk to that a little bit. So mm. different EI curves. Right. What's right, an right. EI curve, yes. right? So EI is is sort of the, the measurement of the elasticity and the inertia of the shaft. That's what okay. EI, elasticity that's what inertia. The so yeah. that's that's where that, that, that kind of name comes from. So basically to how to create EI, uh, we basically two points eight inches apart on the shaft and mm -hmm. we place pressure in the middle of it four inches um sort of from from either point okay and, and basically that'll be there'll be pressure put and it will actually bend the shaft right so that's done multiple points all down the shaft and mm. as the shaft provides resistance we then create a stiffness curve 
Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So the way this kind of works with, with these two shafts, you've got DF, which is slightly more butt stiff, mm. then curves into a slightly softer midsection. RF actually gets a little bit stiffer in the midsection. Oh, okay. And then they, they cross over again. So they kind of, they start a little bit apart in the butt, they cross over into the mid, and mm. then they cross over again in the tip. Right. So stiffer midsection, stiffer handle and tip section in, right. the, uh, in the DF. So they're bending at different points. The moral of the story is why I'm telling you that. They will bend at different points and they will, they will create different energies at different parts of right. the shaft. Right. So obviously that's going to create, you know, different dynamics. Mm. The different uh, dynamics that kind of work down the chain of energy into the club head mm. will cause the club head to react differently, whether that make it open, whether that makes it react with more dynamic loft. It's going to do something. It will do something. It's going to have an effect somewhere down that, uh, that chain of energy. Right. So we saw in this case, you were having a really hard time with the softer profile, mm -hmm. matching it up and getting the face to actually catch up. Right. You kept leaving it open and it just everything was hanging left the opposite of what people normally think. People think soft shaft, snap shut, hit it right. Yeah, you would expect to take a softer shaft and hit snap hooks all day. Definitely, right. not, the, not the case. Not the case. Take something like DF. Why did DF work better? Because it matched your timing. Mm. It was in sync with how you deliver the golf club. So, you know, you have an expectation as to where to find the golf club on your downswing and then ultimately deliver that club face to the ball. That one matched your timing. So okay. in, in sync and in sequence, that one was where you thought it would be at the moment right. of truth. That one with the RF was not where you thought it would be at the moment of truth. Gotcha. So guys, that's, that's really mm. where different brand profiles uh, are utilized by guys in club fitters, mm. you know, and girls uh, like ourselves and how we, we, you know, use them to create different ball flights. Mm. This is exactly it. So if I'm working with a player and all of a sudden I see a specific bend profile going one way, and I don't want it to go that way. I'll go the opposite. I'll go right. and grab something polar opposite because it should do the, the opposite sure. thing. Right. So uh, that, that's exactly how we're using it. We're not using it as the brochure says for you know up and down launch no. and spin. Very seldom are we actually doing that. I've always said, and, and you know you guys can, can go back, we've done enough videos now that you've yeah. you know, heard the spiel. I use loft for that. I use CG for that. Yeah. You know, I use strike point for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't often ever expect a shaft to move the, the, the ball flight up and down. No, and taking a look here to take the, uh, you know, take the veil off this, it didn't. It was Correct. essentially the exact same launch angle within whatever you yeah. want to call that, decimals. Yep. And the spin rate was within less than 200 RPMs. Right, and, and the majority of it, Matt, in all honesty, is the open face versus the square face. Exactly. It's, not, it's nothing to do with the, the, the added the dynamic loft versus the, the lower dynamic right. loft. Right, if right. we come into club data, we can actually see that. So the dynamic loft is 0.8 of a degree higher because the face is more open. Right. End of story. And that's, that's a reason why you got that difference. It, it could be a different, you know, mm -hmm. variable influenced the way that the club came in and gave you that yeah. uh, dynamic loft difference. But for this mm. particular test, my swing, that was the reason that it did it. Yeah. So that's the problem with taking, I guess, <clears throat> what you call like a template based mm -hmm. on this shaft should do this. It just may not do that at all. Correct. Or it may just do something completely different that's that you right. weren't expecting. Definitely, right. definitely. And that's where, you know, we have uh, 110 different driver shafts. We have mm. 352 shafts on our wall in total, um, from you know drivers all the way through to to uh, irons. And if you count wedges, we actually have significantly more. So yep. that's why we have so many shafts because we're we're looking for options to create different solutions for different problems. Right. Ultimately, that's what every head and every shaft is. It's purely a solution for a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, we use different lofts and CGs, adjustable weights and, and head settings, all those sorts of things. They're just, they're just tools. Absolutely. The reason I wanted to do this one specifically tonight was because mm. we found you in good form. And look at this, look at where we've ended up with, you know, the mm. exact same uh, angle of attack, 0 0.1 difference in path. The face angle was different and that was the one variable where we hung on to the face a little bit. Yep. The dynamic lie angle was a little bit different, but not by much. Right. The dynamic loft was affected by the face angle being open. The speed was half a mile an hour apart. No, no big same, deal. Yeah. Basically the same. The strike point was millimeters apart from one another. So the you, average you know, again, was yeah. nothing, yeah. nothing, uh, nothing to kind of pick on there. So really, we're seeing two very similar deliveries. As, as close as I would bet, really, you know, the, the, the 
you know, average human, and, and certainly far from the average human, but you know, the, the sort of advanced sort of golfer could even do. Right. This is as close as we can get. Yeah, the numbers are very tight. Very tight. And then where we saw disparity was things like um, dispersion. And I think the, the averages obviously put the strike points close, but what it didn't show was the variance in strike mm -hmm. points. So the strike points were closer together with the DF yeah. for me, again, and just talking about this test. Yep. And they were more, I guess, erratic with the other shot. And I'll say it, like I say it every time, this is just me and this test. Mm -hmm. Complete opposite experience could be for someone else. Definitely. Maybe the RF is a little bit better for their timing and they'd have a hard time timing this and yeah. they'd, they'd struggle with it. That's right, that's exactly it. And then there's no, there's no guarantees when it no. comes to shaft testing, it really isn't. Um, balance points, weights, Not at all. different flexes and kick points, all that sort of stuff. I mean, so, so guys, hopefully, mm. you know, this is starting to maybe open your eyes to the value of the shaft and what it can do and maybe what it does and what it doesn't do. Um, try not to think, you know, if I've answered the question once in my, my DMs, mm -hmm. uh, I've answered it a million no, times, yeah, yeah. what low launch, low spin shaft do you recommend? Um, well, let's let's start the conversation somewhere else. Yeah, you know what uh, what golf ball are you playing? What club head are you playing? That's very true. You know all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, where what's your average strike point? Let's let's answer ten other questions before we get to you know that that particular question because 100%. Uh, I really don't think it is is the uh, the be all and end all when it comes to launch and spin. No. Guys, hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, we certainly did. We did. Uh, there's there's more to come in this. Uh, this kind of type of series when it comes to debunking myths and, uh, and, and maybe navigating how to select the, the shaft specifically and the benefits of, of different shafts. Yep, for sure. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.